One of the, or, or the, the theme of the IFAC World Congress this year is uh, automatic control uh, for the benefit of humankind. And our, our next talk is precisely that. It's the application of engineering to a real, uh, real world problem that is uh, um, affecting many people, and that's the uh, cleanup of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant after the disaster there. And we have a, a proper expert uh, to talk to us. It's uh, Professor Hajime Asama from the University of Tokyo. I'll just read his biography quickly and then um, let him get to the stage. Uh, Professor Asama received his bachelor's, master's, and uh, do doctor of engineering degree from the University of Tokyo. Um, and then he worked in the Institute of Physical and Chemical Research and uh, later became professor into artifacts at the Center of Engineering at the University of Tokyo in 2002. Um, and since then has been a professor in the School of Engineering at the University of Tokyo since 2009. He received the Japanese Society of uh, Mechanical Engineers um, Robotics and Mechatronics Award in 2009 and the Robot Society of Japan Award for Distinguished Service in 2013. He was the Vice President of the Robot Society of Japan from 2011 to 2012 and ADCOM member of the IEEE Robotics and Automation Society from 2007 to 2009 and uh, President-elect of Intelligent Autonomous Systems Society from 2012 and associate editor of a number of journals including the IFAX Control Engineering Practice, Journal of Robotics and Autonomous Systems and the Journal of Field Robotics. He was director of Mobi, you're going to have to correct me, Mobiligence, um, which is emergence of adaptive motor function through body, brain and environment, a program in the MEX grant in aid uh, scientific research on priority areas from 2005 to 2009. He's a fellow of the Japan Society of Mechanical Engineers and the Robot Society of Japan. Um, and Professor Osama is the task force on the, uh, for, for the remote control technology um, of the Council for the Decommissioning of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. So that's, it's in that uh, role that we introduce him here. Um, Professor Sommer, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Professor Ian Craig and Professor Edward Boje and uh, org uh, organizing uh, committees for inviting me here. It's my great honor uh, to give a, pre a plenary talk in this uh, IFAC World uh, Congress. Uh, actually, uh, my background is service robotics or uh, bio-robotics, but uh, after uh, the uh, uh, disaster, uh, the Great Eastern uh, Japan earthquake and the accident of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant happened in March uh, 2011. Uh, my life was uh, completely changed. And uh, I'm uh, now so much involved in the activities to uh, introduce robot technology or uh, uh, remote controlled machine technologies uh, to the uh, disaster sites. And so today, uh, I don't talk uh, my research, but I'd like to talk the, how we uh, introduce uh, such kind of technologies to the uh, real sites. And uh, uh, this is the uh, stories. Uh, actually, the uh, movies uh, didn't work, so I, I don't know why, but okay. The Great Eastern Japan earthquake and tsunami happened uh, in March 11, 2011, and uh, the magnitude was uh, 9.0. I'm sorry, uh, 9.0, and the maximum seismic, uh, uh, seismic uh, intensity scale was seven. 
So this is a seismic center. And but uh, the, uh, after the earthquake, uh, tsunami attacked the area, the uh, eastern coast area of Japan, and 30 or 60 minutes later than the uh, earthquake, and it totally destroyed these uh, areas. And the biggest issue was the, uh, the, this tsunami attacked the, also the uh, nuclear power plants in uh, Fukushima. And this is a scenario, scenario uh, of the accident uh, happened uh, in this nuclear power plant. So uh, after the earthquake, once the uh, power supply was lost, and, but the emergency generator was activated and the scrum was successfully done and the reactors are stopped. But after that, the tsunami attacked this uh, nuclear power plant. And this is the location of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And uh, all the fuel tanks and generators were damaged. And finally, station blackout happened uh, one, after, uh, one hour after the uh, earthquake. And then a uh, cooling system of reactors and fuel storage pool became in failure and cooling water was lost, and it is considered that all the nuclear fuels uh, melt down. And another biggest issue was the hydrogen explosion. Uh, they, uh, for the unit 134, uh, the hydrogen expo uh, explosion happened, and the uh, very huge uh, amount of uh, uh, contaminated materials were uh, released from this uh, nuclear power plant. And this is a list of accidents of nuclear fa uh, facilities. Three Mile Island uh, accident happened in 1979, and it was a level of five accident. It is accident of coolant loss. And the Chernobyl accident happened in 1986. The level was seven. Uh, and uh, in Japan, the, uh, there was a critical accident of fuel processing uh, in Tokai happened in 1999. Uh, it was the biggest uh, uh, nuclear uh, accident before we had Fukushima accident. And several people are killed by uh, this accident. Uh, in the case of Fukushima, level was uh, uh, seven, even if there are nobody were killed by this accident. And in Fukushima Dutch nuclear power plant, we had six units and uh, uh, unit two, one, two, three was under operation, and the four, five, six were under maintenance. And this is the north side. There are five and six in north side, and this is the sea side. Uh, its uh, its uh, direction is this side. And uh, uh, these are some photo of the uh, buildings. By the hydrogen explosion, unit two, one, three, four, the reactor buildings were totally damaged. And uh, even in unit two, uh, the hydrogen explosion uh, did not happen, but the, the, uh, there are uh, uh, lots of uh, contaminated materials uh, also released from this unit. And this is uh, uh, rather uh, a recent uh, photo, uh, which is taken in 2013, uh, February. And this is unit one. Unit one is now covered by this kind of coverage. This is unit two. And unit uh, uh, three, uh, there are some debris uh, on the operation floor, but it is now, uh, uh, it, it was already uh, removed by this kind of crane or construction machines. And this is unit four. And unit four is un under uh, extraction of the uh, uh, fuels in the uh, spent fuel pool. And uh, uh, this is a survey map. I was called from METI, Ministry of uh, Trade, uh, uh, Industry, uh, uh, Economy, Trade, and Industry uh, in uh, April 6 of 2011. And I was showing these uh, pictures. And this is a, a survey map uh, around this uh, units. And you can observe that there are very high uh, 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 radio uh, 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 activities, for example, or 10 or 20, 40 or uh, 100 millisieverts per hour. 
but uh, 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 after uh, several months, uh, the uh, radiation level uh, was uh, uh, much reduced, uh, and basically now, uh, in most areas, uh, the radiation level is less than two millisievert per hour. And I'd like to show the location of Fukushima. So it is uh, located uh, 227 kilometers north from Tokyo. And uh, uh, the contaminated area is very much localized. And this is uh, a radiation level. And this is radiation levels uh, in April uh, 2011. But three months later, it, it uh, decreased like this. And in February 2012, much decreased. And nowadays, uh, so red portion of this map is much decreased, as you can see. And this is the basic structure of this uh, nuclear power plant. And uh, it is uh, uh, composed of uh, reactor, sorry, reactor building. <coughs> Uh, and the turbine building. So in the reactor buildings, there are three boundaries. The primary boundary is uh, uh, contain uh, the uh, pressure vessels. This is the uh, reactor itself. And the second boundary is the containment vessels. And there is also a, a structure called the suppression chamber in underground level. And there is a uh, reactor buildings. There are triple boundaries uh, to, uh, 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 to cover the uh, 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 fuels. But uh, all these boundaries were broken uh, by the hydrogen explosion uh, in this uh, accident. And uh, this is the ground level. This is the first floor. There are many uh, entrances to uh, enter this uh, building. And uh, uh, this is a, a fifth floor. It is called uh, operation floor. It is a very important floor uh, where you can access the uh, uh, nuclear fuels uh, from this uh, floor. And there is a, a, a pool uh, called uh, spent fuel pool here. And we have also some uh, nuclear fuels inside of this uh, pool. And uh, this is a situation of four units. And uh, all the uh, nuclear fuels inside of the reactors are considered melted down. And there are also some spent fuels in the pools, and all the red parts are fuels. We should extract all the fuels. And also, the, another biggest issue is that there are lots of leakages. So we just uh, uh, inject uh, waters to cool the uh, reactor down but uh, this kind of contaminated water uh, leaked so much. And uh, another issue is that we should fix this leakage. And this is just the uh, uh, current situations. Now, uh, uh, unit one is covered by some coverage, and this is unit two, and this is unit three, so we removed already the debris on the operation floor, and uh, uh, unit four, we uh, removed also the, uh, all the debris on the uh, operation floor, and we uh, uh, already uh, extracted the fuels in the spent fuel pool, 70% uh, uh, of the uh, fuel. And uh, the, all the uh, fuels inside the reactors are considered melted down, and there are lots of contaminated water in the underground levels. That is the situation. Okay, so just after the accident, the Japanese government and the typical company, Tokyo Electric Power Company, which owned this uh, uh, nuclear power plant, established uh, several special project teams. And one of the team was remote control and robotics team. And I was a member of this team. And uh, after the uh, accident, they uh, released this kind of roadmap uh, step one is for three months, and step two is for one year uh, until the end of 2011, and then uh, uh, midterm issues. So here are some issues to be solved. 
uh, cooling reactors or cooling spent fuel pool or mitigation of uh, accumulated water and ground water or, uh, or the uh, monitoring uh, and the decontamination or countermeasures uh, for aftershocks and so on. So if you look at these kind of missions precisely, there are lots of missions uh, which are very difficult to be done by human workers. So we should introduce uh, robot technologies or remote controlled machines for these missions, uh, such as the uh, uh, remote controlled uh, uh, injection operation or uh, uh, removal of debris and so on. Okay, then uh, after uh, uh, we establish the stable uh, cooling uh, situations, uh, they uh, released uh, the new roadmap. And uh, uh, step one is, for, uh, is uh, defined as a period to start of the uh, fuel uh, removal from the spent fuel pool. Uh, it is estimated within two years. And the phase two is defined as a period uh, to, start, uh, to start the fuel debris uh, removal. And it is considered that it will take about 10 years. And after that, uh, phase three, it is for the final decommissioning. And uh, it is considered that it will take about 30 or 40 years. Uh, actually, I'm now 55 years old, so if it takes about 40 years, I could be 95 years old. Uh, I'm not sure I can survive uh, until the end of this, this decommissioning mission. Okay, then uh, this is a kind of list of needs of the robots. And uh, missions, the stabilization of cooling systems or uh, containment, uh, including coverage of reactor buildings, or uh, decommissioning, this is the final target, uh, including extraction of nuclear fuels. And also, this is very important, reduction of radiation exposure for workers. For more detailed tasks, uh, debris removal, or surveillance and mapping outside and inside of the buildings, uh, taking images or measuring radiation and so on, and also instrument setup, sampling, sampling of dusts or contaminated water or fuel debris, and shield and decontamination and uh, material transportation, or construction of pipes, equipment, and so on. Uh, after the accident, uh, uh, we gathered, uh, the uh, scientists and engineers of robotics uh, gathered, and we discussed how we can contribute to this accident. And Professor Yoshihiko Nakamura of the University of Tokyo called, and I was appointed as the chairman of this task force. And the uh, uh, task force is called the ROBOTAD, Robotics Task Force for Anti-Disaster. So the objective is to propose and introduce solutions for disaster response and uh, uh, measures by applying robot technologies. But the uh, most important uh, discussion we made, uh, one is uh, discuss how tolerant the current robot technologies are uh, for this uh, decommissioning mission. And uh, we tested all the mechanical parts and the electrical parts of the robot, and we found that uh, the it, can, uh, it is tolerant uh, until uh, 150 or 60 uh, sievert dose. So uh, at that time, they were using the robot in the environment with uh, about 20 millisievert per hour. So we just uh, released some kind of assessment that you can use this kind of robot more than uh, maybe 1,000 hours. So another uh, issue uh, was uh, whether we can use a radio communication system for teleoperation or not. And uh, Professor Tadokoro of Tohoku University and also Professor uh, uh, Koyanagi of Chiba Institute of Technology 
uh, tested the wireless communication in uh, different uh, nuclear facilities, which is um, Hamaoka nuclear power plant. And they found that the, you cannot use the wireless communication because inside of the uh, nuclear power plant, there are lots of walls and uh, corridors and also obstacles. And uh, the, uh, it is very difficult to use the radio communications. So we just released this kind of assessment to the Japanese government and also TEPCO companies. And from here, I can uh, uh, introduce you some uh, uh, equipment uh, we introduced so far. The first machine is the uh, concrete pump truck. So the first requirement was to cooling down the reactors. So we put the lighting system and the camera on the top of the boom of a uh, concrete pumping truck. And uh, uh, in the remote side, we monitor the uh, image uh, taken by this camera and the remote control the, uh, this boom to establish the uh, stable injection of the water to the reactors. And uh, uh, another story is introduction of uh, uh, unmanned construction uh, system for debris uh, cleaning up. So there were lots of debris scattered in the areas. So some of the debris are generated by the tsunami, but uh, another types of debris uh, generated was uh, by the uh, hydrogen explosion. And this kind of debris was highly radioactive and it was very dangerous. So the workers cannot approach to this kind of debris. So that's why we introduced uh, this kind of uh, systems. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we introduced many kinds of construction machines like backhoes or, uh, with uh, iron fork or uh, uh, chlora dumps and so on. And all these kind of machines are teleoperated by radio communications. And uh, uh, it took about seven uh, months to clear up all the debris scattered in these areas. And after that, the uh, radiation level of this area were, was much uh, reduced. Uh, I'd like to introduce these technologies especially. So originally, this uh, technology for unmanned construction uh, system was introduced in 1993. Uh, we had a disaster of volcano uh, explosion in 1991, and uh, many people were killed by this kind of uh, pyroclastic uh, flow or avalanche of earth and rocks. So there was a requirement to uh, make some kind of constructions to reduce the uh, damage. But the uh, volcano was still active and there was a risk. So that's why uh, we decided to introduce uh, this kind of uh, technologies. All these kind of construction machines are teleoperated. And the important point is that this construction is still uh, uh, done uh, even now. So uh, it continued to be used more than 20 years. So the, the reason why we can introduce this kind of technologies to the nuclear power plant in Fukushima immediately was that this was still used in the site. It is very important point when we think about uh, how we can uh, realize uh, very uh, practical systems which can be used in case of emergency. And uh, then unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, T-Hawk, was introduced uh, in April of 2011. Uh, this is a product of Honeywell Company of the United States. And it was used for the uh, inspection uh, of the uh, uh, reactor buildings. And then PackBot, this is uh, uh, also the uh, product of iRobot company of the United States, uh, were introduced for investigation uh, inside of the nuclear power, uh, uh, reactor buildings. 
And this is the first time uh, we could see what happened inside of reactor buildings. And JAEA, uh, Japan Atomic Energy Agency, developed this kind of operation vehicles. So some kind of uh, robots were teleoperated from these uh, vehicles. And they uh, 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 mounted the gamma camera and uh, they monitored the radiation distribution also. So if you use the uh, gamma cameras, you can take this kind of uh, uh, images, 2D images. So like uh, thermography, you can easily find where is the uh, uh, high uh, radioactive location. It is very useful information. And uh, uh, many other robots are also introduced for the uh, uh, debris removal uh, inside of reactor buildings, like Talon, Bobcat, these are the product of kinetic company of the United States, and the Brock uh, robot, uh, this is uh, a Swedish product. And then a Japanese robot called Queens was introduced in uh, June of two, 2011. And uh, this robot was originally uh, developed for uh, disaster response. And this, this robot has a very high mobility, even uh, uh, running on the uh, terrain or uh, debris. Uh, this robot can go downstairs, upstairs. And uh, so that's why the TEPCO, TEPCO company decided to use it for the missions underground level or second floor or third floor or higher uh, floors. And the first mission was sampling of contaminated water and setting up water level gauge uh, in the uh, underground levels. And uh, this is a photo uh, of the uh, modified queens. They put many devices on the robot and uh, you cannot use the radio communication so they uh, mounted some kind of devices uh, uh, for uh, wired communications. And, but the, the first mission was in failure. So they uh, made a, a, a test with such kind of uh, mock-up systems. So uh, uh, they uh, construct this kind of uh, simulated uh, environment and they test the robot and uh, uh, made the operator training. But the uh, environment of the real uh, uh, facility, uh, uh, the uh, width of the, uh, uh, the uh, stairs was much uh, smaller uh, uh, than, than we expected. That's why uh, our mission was failed. And but uh, this robot was very useful, so it was used to uh, other missions. Uh, for example, investigation uh, inside of uh, uh, reactor buildings in higher floors. And uh, in October uh, tw uh, 2011, uh, the Queens uh, succeeded in uh, investigation of the operation floor. So it climbed up all the stairs and finally it reached it, uh, to the operation floor. And this is the uh, interface, uh, user interface display uh, during the operation. So you can see the uh, uh, camera image, uh, front camera and rear camera and overhead cameras. And uh, you can also uh, monitor the re radiation level. And this is a battery and you can uh, uh, have the image of the pose of uh, robot. And uh, this robot uh, uh, succeeded in the mission for investigation of, of fifth floor. But uh, uh, on the way back, uh, there was uh, some kind of uh, uh, failure happened. Uh, we consider that uh, there was a failure in communication and we could not communicate with the robot uh, when he uh, reached uh, uh, on the third floor. And this robot uh, still remained uh, in uh, uh, third floor of the unit two. 
so far, we lost five kinds of robot. This is one of the robot uh, we could not recover. And also, we used a uh, uh, warrior robot for crean uh, uh, craning uh, inside of reactor buildings mm, for the uh, decontamination, but it was not so uh, 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 efficient. And the biggest contribution of the robot is the inspection of soundness of CS system. CS is core spray system. To realize the stable cooling uh, functions, so we'd like to restart the core spray system. And uh, if we, you restart these systems, uh, you can spray the uh, waters inside of the uh, pressure vessels. So, but you should check all the pipes and valves and so on. And uh, this kind of robots were used for the checking. And after that, we, uh, we succeeded in restart the uh, uh, cooling down system. And it was very, very uh, important issue. And then, this is another story. Uh, this is uh, inspection inside the reactor buildings in unit three. And uh, uh, so this is a mission. So this is a wall of the uh, reactor building, and this is a wall of the uh, containment vessels. If you uh, uh, try to access inside of the uh, containment vessels, you should access this area and open this hatch. And so before that, we investigated the radiation level of these areas by robot. And this is a result. In the, in the case of point one, you can see that uh, this is very high uh, value, uh, 870 millisieverts per hour. So after that, the, they gave up to access this area. And, uh, uh, but uh, we'd like to uh, uh, observe inside of the containment vessel. So we introduced an uh, industrial end scope uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, the uh, containment vessels. There is a some small hole, uh, which is called the penetration, and we inserted the end scope from that hole. So this is an image taken by this uh, endoscope. So you can see the water drops, uh, that is uh, injected water for cooling down. But uh, you can also see many, many small noises. The, we consider that these noises are uh, generated by the uh, 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 radiation. And uh, in the March uh, 2012, and uh, the radiation level was also monitored, and uh, it was found that uh, inside of the uh, containment vessels, uh, 73 uh, sieverts per hour was observed. So it is very high. You cannot survive more than five minutes. And uh, uh, another story is that introduction of ROV, so remote operated vehicles for uh, investigating the spent fuel pool. There are lots of uh, debris scattered on the rack of the uh, uh, fuels. And uh, uh, they use this kind of robot to make this kind of map of the debris on the uh, racks. And after making this kind of a rack, they uh, extract all the debris one by one, and finally they started to extract the fuel itself. And this is another robot introduced in April uh, 2012. This is uh, called Survey Runner, uh, produced by Topi Industry of Japan. And it was uh, used to uh, check the leakages uh, underground so they suspect some leakages on this uh, kind of flange, and this robot walk along this kind of uh, grating uh, corridor, but they couldn't find the leakages at this time. 
Actually, uh, this is one of the robots uh, we could not recover also. Uh, actually, there are several reasons why this kind of failure happened. Uh, there are three main uh, factors. One is that uh, we don't know the exact environment information. So we should operate the robot in unknown environment. That is the one of the factors we could uh, fail. And another uh, reason is that all the robot is just a prototype. Uh, it was mostly uh, developed uh, uh, immediately. And uh, so uh, the reliability is not so high. The third factor is human factors. So we usually uh, make a test and train the operators by mock-up systems. But still, in the real situations, uh, there are some uh, human mistakes and the misoperation of the robot, and sometimes it fails. Okay, this is uh, uh, another story. So they use this kind of remote-controlled crane or construction machines to clear up all the uh, debris on the operation floor. And uh, uh, this is another story that they, uh, they introduce uh, this kind of balloon systems uh, to investigate in the, uh, uh, the uh, operation floor of unit one. So it is covered by the coverage, so it is very difficult to access this uh, operation floor in the case of unit one. So there is this kind of equipment hatch. So we utilize this kind of hatch and uh, just introduce this kind of balloons. After several failures, we uh, finally succeeded in introducing kind of uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> balloon and take some pictures. I'm sorry that uh, this, is a, uh, this was a movie, but it, it didn't work. Okay, and uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, quadrupt uh, uh, robot. Uh, developed by Toshiba uh, company. It was used for the inspection of uh, suppression chamber vent pipe leakages. And this is a combination of parent robot and child robot. And uh, this is child robot, and this robot was released from this uh, parent robot. And uh, this robot walk along this pipe and uh, approaches to the, uh, the uh, connection part of the pipes and uh, uh, check the leakages. And uh, there are of, uh, also some uh, failures in, in, this, uh, in this type of the robot. Once the robot fell down, and also once the small robot uh, could not operate, but after uh, uh, experienced some uh, failures, uh, finally we succeeded in check all the eight pipes. Uh, but even in this time, uh, uh, we could not find any leakages. And this is another story. So uh, Frigo MA, a robot uh, which was developed by a Mitsubishi Electric Toki Systems, was introduced uh, for inspection in some areas. And this robot was uh, developed by Honda Company and uh, AIST, National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. And uh, this uh, 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 manipulator has 11 degrees of freedom. And uh, Honda developed this manipulator by uh, utilizing the ASIMO robot technology. And AIST developed this kind of uh, mobile platform and there are lots of uh, places in high locations to be checked, but uh, we introduced this robot in June 2013, and uh, now it is still working on the site. And the Kajima uh, Corporation established this kind of automated system for debris transportation. So uh, it is a combination of two systems. So one is automatic transportation by a crawler dumps truck. Uh, this truck uh, uh, transports debris from the debris uh, destruction site to the temporary storage facility. 
And second system is the uh, automatic uh, transportation by forklift. And this forklift is uh, automated to transfer, uh, transport the uh, f uh, debris from this uh, storage to the final storage. And uh, this is uh, a robot called Astakosora, developed by Hitachi Engineering and Services. This is very small construction machines, but this robot has a dual arm. It is very useful if you have two arms. And you can uh, make a very, uh, how do you say, dexterous uh, manipulation, uh, uh, for example, for uh, removing uh, the debris. Uh, and this is also a dual arm robot, which was uh, developed by Mitsubishi Heavy Industry. This robot was called Meister. And this robot was introduced recently for core sampling of the operation floor. And the, uh, in uh, November last year, we finally found the leakage of contaminated water. So it took more than uh, two and a half years after the uh, accident. So uh, Hitachi AG Nuclear Energy uh, Company uh, developed this kind of boat type robot supervised by Professor uh, uh, Tamaki Ura of the University of Tokyo. He moved to Kyushu Institute of Technology recently. And this robot was introduced uh, to uh, uh, this uh, uh, areas. So this is a suppression chamber and this room was called the uh, Taurus uh, room. And there is some contaminated water. And they put this uh, robot on the surface of this contaminated water and it navigates 180 degrees. Uh, actually, the suppression chamber is a kind of structure of torus, donut. And uh, uh, this robot navigates itself to uh, this uh, clockwise 180 degrees and also counterclockwise 180 degrees. And that, at that time, uh, this robot found some leakages from the broken pipes and also some water uh, flow uh, uh, along the uh, walls of the uh, con uh, containment vessel. And uh, this robot uh, was called Raccoon, and it was uh, developed by Atox Company of Japan. It was also uh, introduced for decontamination. And uh, uh, another decontamination robot was uh, Moose, which is a product of Pentec Company of the United States. And there are several types with dozer or vacuuma or scabra and so on. It was uh, introduced for the, uh, the decontamination of the operation floor of unit three. Okay, then uh, another type of robot was uh, 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 developed and introduced for uh, measuring the water uh, level inside of the suppression chamber. This device has a sonar system to measure the uh, uh, level of the uh, water inside of the suppression chamber. So when we, in, first, uh, firstly, we introduced this robot, but uh, it was failed because the contaminated water was much oily and turbid uh, than we expected. So we changed some of the ways to measure and uh, re-enter this robot. And uh, finally, uh, it succeeded to measure the uh, height of the water. And this is a rather recent uh, result. So uh, recently, we succeeded in introducing some radio uh, communication systems. So we usually use two robots. And one robot is uh, used for the relay uh, system uh, of uh, radio communication. And this is a combination of the warrior and the packboat. And uh, by, uh, uh, actually the gamma camera is very heavy and it is uh, only mounted on the warrior robot. And uh, in this case, warrior robot investigated the radiation uh, distribution. And uh, January this year, Astakosora uh, found 
uh, this kind of uh, contaminated water flow by accident. Uh, it was used for the debris clearing, uh, debris removal, but by accident it found uh, this kind of water flow. We are very, very surprised. And now we are checking the origin of this water. And then this is the most uh, recent uh, 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 utilization of the robot. And the mission was to take the core samples of the uh, 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 operation floor. The mission was very uh, difficult. And this is unit two, and it was not, uh, the building was not uh, broken. But there was a kind of window, and you, uh, we introduced a robot from this window and uh, uh, to take these kind of core samples. But there are some fences, so you should uh, remove this fence first by this robot. And when we introduced this robot, uh, it succeeded in taking uh, over this fence. But uh, when it reaches to this area, uh, there was a ditch, uh, unexpected ditch on the floor, and it fell down, and uh, we couldn't recover this robot. Uh, but after that, we introduced uh, another type, uh, Robot Meister, to this mission, and uh, finally it succeeded in taking the core sample of this uh, location. So I talked about uh, a uh, long history, and uh, also this kind of robot was also uh, introduced to check the leakages uh, of, of, the, uh, uh, of this pipe, and it found some leakages of uh, this kind of uh, barrels, and it was very successful. And I, uh, I'd like to introduce some uh, robot under uh, development. And this is a robot called the Transformer. It is very different from the Transformer you know. And uh, we should introduce the robot from the very small hole called the penetration. But this robot should uh, uh, navigate uh, along this kind of uh, uh, grating floor uh, to access uh, this kind of area, uh, which is called the uh, pedestal. So there should be some uh, melt-down uh, fields here, so we'd like to see it. But uh, the entrance is very small. So when we enter this robot, the shape of the robot could be some kind of snake shape but uh, it transforms itself and uh, becomes this kind of shape uh, when it is uh, navigated here. And it will be introduced very soon, I think. And these are some other robots uh, under development. Uh, they are developed by Hitachi G Nuclear Energy, uh, underwater ROV, underwater uh, water, wall climbing robot, uh, or this is some other robots developed by Toshiba and IHI company. And this is inspection robot for lower wall, a suppression chamber, or a bent tube junction, and so on. Okay. So under aerial vehicles are also under development to be used inside of the reactor building. And one is developed by Chiba University and a tox company, and also uh, IRS, this is uh, uh, International Rescue System Institute and Tohoku University, with collaboration with Carnegie Mellon University. Okay, there was also another project, which is called uh, Unmanned Disaster Response System Research and Development, and it is uh, funded by METI, METI and NIDO. And these kind of robots were uh, already uh, developed, including uh, radio communication repeaters or a common human interface or uh, robot suits uh, for the uh, workers. Uh, and uh, some of the uh, systems were already introduced in real sites. Okay. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, some uh, interesting technologies. So this was developed by Professor Yamashita, my associate professor. It is a kind of uh, uh, a human interface. And uh, he uh, 
put the four uh, fisheye cameras on the robot, and this is a camera image you can take. Actually, the fisheye camera has a very wide range, so you can take the very wide area uh, information. And you can combine the image, uh, integrate the image to get, uh, to generate uh, image uh, taken from the virtual camera on the top. And this is a result. So uh, you can generate this kind of image even if you don't have the camera on the top. So it is very useful when you operate the robot in very narrow space or such kind of maze environment, as you see. And also, uh, we can uh, superimpose the information taken by the laser range sensors, and you can easily recognize the obstacles. And it will help the teleoperation of the robot. And recently, uh, uh, they, they succeeded in generating this kind of view from arbitrary viewpoint. By integrating the four images of fisheye camera, you can generate this kind of uh, view. So you can see the uh, 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 images of surrounded area of the robot, and you can also uh, recognize some uh, uh, people in the environment. And uh, we think that it is very useful for teleoperated robot inside of reactor buildings. Okay, so then I uh, moved to uh, the uh, stories for the decommissioning. So this is a main story uh, uh, planned uh, in typical companies. So it is a wrong story. So firstly, we introduced some robot system for uh, decontamination, reduce the radiation levels inside of the buildings, and then uh, we introduced some uh, equipment, or robots, to localize the leakages and fix it. And then uh, we try to fill some water in the containment vessels uh, for the uh, uh, shielding the radiation from the fuel debris. And of course, we should fix all the uh, uh, damages of the pipes, of the valves, and so on. Uh, finally, uh, we'd like to fill uh, water uh, fully uh, in the uh, containment vessel. Then we introduce some kind of special devices to cut and extract the uh, uh, fuel debris. And uh, it is the original plan. But uh, now we are thinking it is a very, very difficult mission because we should check more than 700 um, valves and the pipes, and there are a lot of uh, possibilities that the, uh, uh, the, uh, some parts are broken. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> and uh, uh, this is for debris uh, uh, extraction and decommissioning. So, actually, we should uh, uh, develop many kinds of the robot, and we should have some uh, portfolio of the robot uh, and equipment because there are many uh, kinds of tasks and the environment. And also, uh, uh, from now, we need to uh, uh, access to the field debris. We need some uh, manipulator uh, or handling devices and also, we are approaching to the debris, the radiation level will, will go up uh, dramatically. So we need some more uh, radio uh, tolerant devices. And also, uh, we should think about alternative plan, for example, uh, operation in dry conditions. So consider considerations. OK. Uh, actually, uh, we failed to uh, introduce the robot uh, technologies immediately after the accident. Of course, nowadays, it's okay. We introduce many robot technologies. But just after the accident, the Japanese media criticized robotic scientists. And uh, uh, they indicated the responsibility of robot scientists. And there are a lot of emails sent to the uh, Honda company asking why 
ton, uh, Ashimo cannot be used at the uh, disaster sites. And the uh, Honda company apologized uh, that the, uh, the function of Ashimo is not enough uh, for the uh, disaster response. And people are very much disappointed to know the robot technology is not so useful in real situation when it is demanded. So that is a problem. And uh, 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 actually, we have many projects uh, for the nuclear facilities. We develop many kinds of the robot for nuclear facilities, but uh, they are all uh, limited based, uh, to basic research and fundamental technology development. It is not so practical. And also, after the JCO criticality accident, uh, they developed many kinds of robots, but uh, it was uh, not maintained, so we could not use it. So that was a big issue. So we had lots of uh, our, uh, robot technology R&D projects for nuclear applications and disaster response in the past, but we failed in introducing uh, the robot technology smoothly. So there should be some kind of uh, gap between expectation uh, to robot technology and reality. So that is a problem. And uh, so these are some lessons learned and future issues. First, we should examine the political uh, strategies. Uh, we should think about sustainability of technology for possible disasters and also limitation of demand and market because disaster uh, don't happen so often. So actually the demand and the market are quite limited. That is another problem. And we should combine with maintenance use. And uh, uh, we recognize the necessity of projects to develop more practical technology usable at sites involving users. So these are some, uh, we proposed some uh, projects. For example, uh, technology uh, mobility for mobility and access in extreme environment, or technology for stable communication, technology for spatial awareness in remote control, technology for autonomy to facilitate remote operation, and sensing technology for inspection, diagnosis, maintenance, so on. And also we uh, propose uh, to start project for system integrations, including challenge or competition for solution derivations. Then uh, we recognize also the necessity of facility and the organization for practical technology development, testing, and quick response to possible emergency and disasters. And it is also necessary to con conserve the technology and knowledge for long life artificial systems. Uh, okay, this is a story uh, I, uh, we proposed with the industry to the Japanese government. So there are some needs for the commissioning of nuclear power plant, but we should uh, also prepare for the possible nuclear accident for the future. And also we should think about uh, preparation for natural disasters and accident of social infrastructure such as tunnels or bridges or uh, uh, chemical plants or complexes. So there are uh, many difficult uh, factors in tasks and environment for humans, so that's why uh, we need to utilize the robot technologies. We should also think about the productivity improvement of uh, uh, monitoring or inspection or maintenance. So we propose two things. One is development and measurement of practical RT systems, and another one is preparation of the system develop, uh, deployment in the case of emergency. Okay, this is, uh, we propose three things. One is project and program for RT systems, R&D, and second one is very important. We propose to establish RT center for disaster prevention and response. Uh, it, this uh, uh, center should have some, some function for operation test and uh, operator training or functional evaluation and certification and manage of technological uh, information of RT, including uh, archive and uh, database and emergency response by, uh, with device deployment and operation. So utilization in ordinary situation is very important uh, if you utilize it in emergency situation. These are some political uh, proposal, strategy planning and uh, standardization of uh, uh, evaluation of function and uh, regulation design and so on. Uh, finally, I will uh, uh, introduce some secret. 
So how I behave to propose to the Japanese government? So I made three scenarios. Is one is decommissioning, and the social residence is another one. And the third is reconstructions. I put the industries in the center of this mission and uh, uh, make academia uh, uh, a kind of uh, support of the industries. And the first scenario is decommissioning. Uh, TEPCO is responsible for decommissioning and the Japanese government is supporting. And Agency of Natural Resources and Energy should fund for R&D and industry should make uh, research and development with academia and the outcome should be fed back to the TEPCO. This is the first story. Second story, for we generalized uh, this concept for preparation of disasters. So METI and MEX, this is Ministry of uh, Economy, Trade and Industry and the Ministry of Education, of Science and Technology fund for R&D of robot technologies. And the industry and the academia developed the robot technology and the users are some uh, public sectors, not private sectors. So it is uh, Ministry of uh, Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and the Ministry of Defense and the Fire Defense Agency. And the third story is risk construction. Uh, oh, uh, the, uh, the, this outcome should con uh, contribute to the national safe and secure life. And the third story is reconstruction. Reconstruction Agency of Japan is responsible for reconstruct the Fukushima area. They should support the local government. And uh, it will contribute to the economy and life of local area and community. So we put some, uh, this international uh, disaster response uh, robot uh, R&D center and the international disaster uh, response robot testing facilities uh, to be established in Fukushima areas. So all the uh, uh, results should be tested there and uh, by, uh, with some support of local industry. And uh, the result is tested and introduced to them. So I integrate all the three stories. And finally, many kinds of projects are, are now started in Japan. I don't have much time, so I skip all the uh, one. But uh, my image is now under realization. So uh, I think it is very good chance to collaborate with uh, uh, internationally to realize this kind of framework. Okay, I'm sorry, I will summarize. This is the last slide. For future, uh, I think it's very important to transform the bitter experience to the chance of the technological advancement by developing more dependable and demanded technology for safe and secure the society. And second, I think it is very important to construct international network and the framework for cooperation in knowledge sharing and technology transfer. And last, it is also very important to develop young human resources and keep knowledge and technology beyond the generation. Thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> Well, uh, thank you very much to Professor Sama. Um, I have very light duty, which is really to wish you well this evening and uh, for the rest of the Congress. Thank you very much.